For the Western explorer, trekking the trails of Nepal is the ultimate walking experience. Used for centuries for travel and trade, the trails are now avenues to adventure. The country is largely roadless, so trekking is the best way to uncover this country's charm and character. Depending upon the trek chosen, whether it lasts for days or for weeks, the sensitive trekker will encounter a constantly changing landscape with tremendous opportunities for cross-cultural engagements with their very gracious hosts. Most treks begin in Kathmandu with a bus trip to the jump-off point. Where the walking begins, porters eagerly sort out loads. These porters are paid between two and four dollars a day to carry 70 to 100 pounds on a trump line across their forehead. Without these barefooted porters, the trekking industry would collapse. People of all ages and physical ability explore Nepal on foot. Although being in good physical condition is not a necessity, it's a great help. And it is said, if you aren't in shape at the beginning of the trek, you will be at the end. To view the richness of the mountain beauty and to escape the weather's intensity, the best trekking is done in the spring and fall. On a commercial trip, highly trained staff handle every detail from putting up tents to cooking. In the morning, trekkers average about four hours of walking. If the sun is shining or if the rain is falling, carrying an umbrella will deflect midday heat or monsoon rain. Generally, trekkers average eight to 10 miles a day unless the terrain is very difficult. A hot luncheon at a scenic spot breaks up the day before hiking to the evening campsite. If it rains, it doesn't matter. The staff brings a three-course meal to the tent door. This can be the most luxurious camping in the world. And all of this is done with a smile, as pleasant as it is broad. In the center of the country, the impressive Annapurna Mountains contain no less than 11 23,000-foot peaks. Pokhara, with its beautiful reflective Fewa Lake, is a traditional beginning point for Annapurna treks. However, the classic around Annapurna trek often begins in the small town of Dumre, halfway between Kathmandu and Pokhara. This ambitious and rugged 150-mile route around the Annapurna mountains takes three weeks to a month. Passing up the Marsiangdi Valley, which bends around the back of the Annapurna Range, the traveler ascends into an increasingly remote area. Suspension bridges and steep trails lead to Manang and other Tibetan Buddhist communities with their prayer walls and prayer flags. Crossing 17,769-foot Thorong La Pass, the traveler is dwarfed by unparalleled views of the north side of the Annapurnas. Crossing from east to west, the hikers must begin early in the morning because campsites are scarce on the steep western side of the pass. While some trekking groups are turned back by storms or difficult snow conditions, the reward on a perfect day is a view of a stunning mountain world. Once over the pass, the trail drops down to the Kali Gandaki Valley and the shrine at Muktinat, which is an important pilgrimage site for both Hindus and Buddhists. Inside the temple, a burning natural gas jet has been accorded mystical qualities.
Hindus believe that washing in the 108 water spouts brings salvation after death. The Kaligandaki Valley, lying between the Annapurna and Daulagiri ranges, is one of the deepest gorges in the world. The prosperous Takali people are Tibetan in background, although Hindu influence is growing in the area. Traditionally, they dominated trade through this area. Another popular trek in the Annapurna region is the hike into the Annapurna Sanctuary. Maurice Herzog, the famed French climber, traveled here when he wrote his classic mountaineering book, Annapurna, describing the first ascent of an 8,000 meter peak. This area, surrounded by the great Annapurna peaks, some topping 26,000 feet, is possessed with a mystical aura. One of the intriguing aspects of exploring the trails of Nepal is meeting local people. Their lives are centered around the family agricultural plots, which they cultivate by hand. Every member of the family works, and one of the tasks of young people is providing fuel for cooking. Each year, they must travel farther afield to collect wood fuel, because the hillsides and forests are being cleared for farmland. Without forest areas for grazing the animals, the trees that remain are stripped of their leaves. The bundles of leaves are carried home to feed the animals. Trekkers call them walking bushes. Life is not easy, and the many years of hard work show up in calloused hands and feet. Cleansing the house with a mixture of cow dung and water purifies the house spiritually. One of many small ways religion is incorporated into the daily lives of the people. While their culture is very different from Western cultures, common threads abound. and at the end of a long busy day, a relaxing chat with tea on the porch. From these isolated hill villages come the famed Gurkhas of Nepal. These brave soldiers bolster the forces of the British and Indian armies. Renowned for their tenacity and loyalty, they played key roles in World Wars I and II. In the 1982 Falklands crisis, South American troops fled before the reputation of the Gurkhas. In the heat of battle, Gurkhas fight hand to hand with their curved fighting knife, the Kukri. Impressed by their bravery in the Anglo-Nepali War of 1814, the British have been recruiting Nepali teenagers for over a hundred years. And after spending their working career in army bases in Hong Kong, Singapore, Brunei, or Belize, the Gurkhas return to their home villages where they are afforded great status. Joining the military is still an honored and desired goal of many young people. But today, increasing numbers of rural children are attending school. Education was once strictly for the rich and the elite, but in an effort to develop the country, the government is building schools rapidly. 
A per capita income of around $200 makes Nepal one of the poorest countries in the world materially. And simple improvements, such as clean water, bring tremendous improvements in rural living. The charm of the people and the beauty of the land attracts explorers from all around the world. The allure of hiking Nepal's mountains is no secret. Now, running its rivers, both calm and wild, is becoming more and more popular as well. Floating down a milky, silt-laden stream filled with glacial flour sends the rafter slicing through sheer cliff gorges. Dropping down these very steep mountains, the rivers of Nepal are some of the most difficult in the world. River rafting developed during the 70s when intrepid explorers mastered the Trisoli and other rivers. Today, touring companies spread the excitement. On self-catered trips, the riders put up the tents, cook the food, and paddle the rafts for first-hand excitement when slamming down rapids. The rivers of Nepal, for the most part, end up in the Terai, a low, flat, hot land that was once covered with impenetrable jungles. Today, sections of the Terai are protected, like the Royal Chitwan National Park, 75 miles southwest of Kathmandu. For many years, this important sanctuary for endangered wildlife was the private hunting preserve of the King of Nepal. Royalty and dignitaries from around the world joined the king to shoot game from the backs of elephants. Today, you can still hunt. Not with a gun, however, but with a camera. Riding above the 15-foot-high elephant grass, the back of a padding pachyderm is a safe way to view Nepal's richest wildlife area. The elephants can approach the wild animals much more closely than a person on foot can. Once found throughout the Indian subcontinent, less than a thousand of the great one-horned rhinos survive. About 300 live in the swampy grasslands of Chitwan. Another endangered species is the rarely seen Bengal tiger. The biggest danger to animals today is not hunting, but the disappearing habitat. Fortunately, Nepal's conservation-minded government has set aside over 5% of the country as parks and wildlife refuges. The competition between the needs of wildlife and man illustrates one of Nepal's more complex problems, its population growth. The area surrounding the Chitwan National Park is the breadbasket of Nepal. But the population is growing faster than the food supply, heralding grave problems for the future of Nepal. Mount Everest, the highest point on Earth, acts like a beacon to travelers who come from around the world to gaze at its broad shoulders. What once required 12 days of walking from Kathmandu to Lukla can now be flown in less than an hour. Landing is an adventure all its own. The planes unload mountaineers and trekkers who have come to explore Sagarmata National Park. Sagarmata is the Nepali word for Mount Everest. And many of the Sherpa people live inside the park, which was set up to protect not only the scenic beauty of the land, but also the culture of the people that live here. A difficult task for what began as a trickle of visitors in the 60s today is a flood of thousands each year. And these visitors have had a profound impact not only on the land, but also the people. One popular trek leads up through Namche Bazaar, a busy Sherpa village, to the monastery at Tiangboche, and then up to Everest Base Camp.
Nepal is home to eight of the world's 10 highest mountains. Until 1949, they were unapproachable from Nepal. Now they are a mecca for climbers who consider them the most challenging in the world and the most dangerous. One out of 40 Himalayan climbers do not return from their expeditions. Over 50 climbers have died on Mount Everest and many Sherpas die in an effort to get total strangers to the roof of the world. Massive Mount Everest, 29,028 feet above sea level, named after a 19th century British surveyor, is known as Sagamarta to the Nepalese. In 1953, Edmund Hillary of New Zealand and Sherpa Tenzing Norgay of India reached the summit. They were the first. Since then, over 200 people have reached the summit. In what is perhaps the supreme climbing test, Reinhold Messner of Italy in 1980 climbed Mount Everest alone and without bottled oxygen. After climbing Mount Everest, it was the Sherpa people who drew Sir Edmund Hillary back to Nepal. He and many others are attracted by the engaging Sherpas, who traditionally were semi-nomadic. The yak is an essential part of their traditional life, providing them with milk to churn into butter, hair to weave into rugs, and strong backs for heavy loads. At high altitudes, both animals and people carry heavy loads, one of the reasons why the Sherpa men and women have been so successful as porters and guides. Agriculture is an important part of their traditional life. On small plots, they grow buckwheat, vegetables, and potatoes. Another important activity was trade, for the Sherpas prospered importing salt from Tibet into Nepal. After the Chinese took over Tibet, the salt trade dried up. But trekking and mountaineering have been equally profitable. So Namchi Bazaar's Saturday market, called the Hot Bazaar, is still a bustling commercial fair. The Sherpa people immigrated centuries ago from Tibet, bringing with them the Tibetan Buddhist culture. Family elders say prayers from the rooftops to appease the spirits they believe inhabit the rocks, the streams, and the mountains. Appeasing these spirits ensures a healthy, rich, and long life. Generally, the older people are most active in their faith. Spinning their prayer wheels and turning their rosaries while repeating their mantras. Their art reflects their strong beliefs. The Sherpa word for artist is kapa, meaning skilled one. The Tanka style of painting is highly stylized, using traditional technique to depict the Buddhist pantheon of gods, goddesses, and demons. For the Sherpa people of the Kumbu region, one of the most important monasteries has been Tiangboche. Every fall, after the crops are in and before the winter storms begin, Sherpas and increasing numbers of tourists assemble in the courtyard of Tiangboche Monastery to celebrate the Mani Rimdu festival. Great horns are blown, then the monks parade in. Monks play all the musical instruments and all the roles in the three-day celebration. These dancers tell a story out of the distant past, a time when Indian sages arrived in Tibet with the new religion, Buddhism. They encountered an older religion called Bonism, an animistic religion. A tremendous struggle between the two religions ensued, and out of that struggle, a new religion was formed, Tibetan Buddhism.
change is implicit to survival. And although the Sherpas are often seen in a quaint and quiet stability, the winds of change penetrate even these remote valleys. The young people dream of being pilots, not porters. Hydroelectricity powers lights in Namchi Bazaar. But disaster can accompany change. The beautiful Tiangboche Monastery burned down in 1988. A deep and abiding faith is moving the Sherpas to restore the monastery and rekindle their strong cultural base. After centuries of isolation, the Himalayan mountains are revealing their secrets. Shangri-La was a world waiting to be discovered. Western travelers have found the Himalayas. Escaping the age of communication and jets, the traveler steps back into time to a place where centuries-old traditions prevail. where warm and hospitable people face change with a courage and dignity that sustain cultures rooted in the past, but open to the future. For the bold traveler, fresh from exploring the Himalayas, it will be the people, these wonderful, colorful faces, that will be indelibly etched upon a lifelong memory.